gosh, this is a terrific job. I mean, you have the opportunity of opening on a Thursday morning a program like Good Morning Australia by saying hello and welcoming model and actor Virginia Hayes. Is with Hi, Virginia. Good to see you. Good morning. Good morning to you. Listen, weren't you fantastic last week? Congratulations. You were very, very funny. Thank you. On that, uh, the Don Lane Best Of. Good on you. Would Brilliant. you believe, I haven't seen the show yet, but I've, I've got it on tape and I'm going to see it on the weekend. I think you should. I think you'll be very delighted. Yeah. Just right, Don's the very tall American guy, <laughs> isn't he? The one that didn't dress up. That's right. Well, not on camera anyway. <laughs> but one thing, we discovered just before coming on air that we, uh, we share mutual friends. As a matter of fact, speaking of Don, Yes. His former girlfriend, Carmen Van Hoogen Hagen 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 Van Hoeren. Yeah, she's a lovely girl. Oh, she's fantastic. Of course, they've, they've got a family. Uh, Carmen comes from a family of five girls who are all over six foot, all incredibly beautiful. And one is Carmen. Carmen mm -hmm. used to go out with Don. And then right. there's um, a whole host of others. Valeska, unfortunately, is not she with died, us anymore. She, she died, didn't she? Which is very sad. And uh, Carmen and um, Tanya and um, Yvonne. Mm. You, you're talking tall with the Van Hoogen Hagen Hegans. I mean, you're not exactly <laughs> minute yourself, are you? No, I'm not. I'm about six as well, six foot. Mm. But that, that would have to be of help to you in your career, wouldn't it? It has been up until now, yes. Of course, in the modelling world, it's enormously helpful. You have to be that tall. But uh, I find in my personal life, it's, uh, it's not such a big plus. Why is that? Uh, well, men are slightly intimidated. They, no one ever believes that I'm actually rather shy and... and um, Demure, yeah, <laughs> little, and what, person, and little person living in a huge body. Yeah, and they're but, reticent, um, are they? Well, yeah, uh, but th I think they're intimidated because as soon as you put on heels, you bang, I go up to about six foot three and it's rather scary, I think. Um, Could you just stand for me? For <laughs> Hang on, I have to get my microphone. Not a worry. Yeah. Lucky our microphone. <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's... Should we make a good couple? Put, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, um, oh yeah. yes. Thank God Patty shops on the Sorry, Thursday. Patty. <laughs> yeah. You've lost your husband. I now. think that's just wonderful. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about ARC. Yes. Now, talking about former television partners, a very good friend of mine <laughs> lost a television show as the result of ARC. No, seriously? Yes. Who was that? Well, uh, well it didn't lose a television show, but we got into a situation where we had to pre-tape. Graham Kennedy, I'm speaking of. A famous really? pro call. Oh, which sounded I remember like, Graham. Yes. Oh, how old does that make me? Oh, well, well, I mean, he worked up until quite recently, Yeah. I think. Yeah, well, I'm sure he did. So, what is, what's your ARC? Well, I, first of all, before I tell you about ARC, I just You said you'd never show those. <laughs> we had a weekend together. Recognise one of those bottoms? She would <laughs> never show them. That's Bert. Mm. So Isn't what's great? the why are, we, why are we looking at naked men's bottoms? Enjoyed by some on the crew, I'm sure. Well, but we're actually not going to um, enjoy an ad that's coming out next week um, that was made by ARC. ARC is a non profit environmental organisation uh, based in Sydney, and they've got a fantastic sense of humour. Most of the environmental groups are really boring, or people think that they're really boring. But uh, this one in particular is lots of fun. They've got a great sense of humour. So, what they've decided to do is to exploit men for a change. Right. Now, I don't know whether you want me to talk about it before you show the ad, but uh, most. Uh, television commercials um, all over the world, I was going to say just in Australia, use the female shape mm -hmm. to uh, promote a particular product, right. you know, and so I suppose they, they exploit female, female sexuality. But what ARC have decided to do is to go completely over the top and exploit male sexuality to um, attract attention to their product. Mm. Now the products are laundry powder, so boys' bottoms and boys' um, you know, bare muscles and bare bodies has nothing to do with the laundry powder, but you know, such is it's the case with most. It's a bit of fun. And also, but the interesting part about it is that the products are in fact fundraisers. So if anyone out there, and they're exclusively at Coles, Coles has been really supportive throughout this whole campaign. Mm -hmm. So if e anyone buys the product at Coles, um, the money raised from purchasing the product will go to uh, fund uh, a, a computer disc. It's called an environmental educational computer disc. Say that in one go. Yes. <laughs> um, and one will be given to every school free in Australia. Isn't that a terrific idea? And uh, the disc has a lot of um, uh, information on it for the kids so that they can learn how to improve their environment at home, mm. at school and in their local community. Look, enough of talk. I can't yeah. wait to see the Kyber. It's great. Uh, here's it's the commercial great. that Virginia is talking about. Let's have a look together. I haven't seen this. These low allergy cleaning products from the environmental group are are available exclusively at Coles. For all you ladies buying them, this is for you. Art cleaning products exclusively from Coles. Oh, that's good so fun. So there you go. Isn't uh, that good oh, fun? It's great fun.
They've got a great sense of humour, that organisation. So I hope everyone runs out and, uh, and buys the product. But don't you think it's about time that we exploited men? For well, respect. well, I, I, yes, I suppose. <laughs> yes, not we necessarily. Yeah. yeah, but I think I think it's good fun to turn it around. Okay, I, I, I wonder so. sometimes. I mean, exploitation surely must be in the mind of the person themselves. It's the same with rights, regardless of you know whether you're talking about feminist rights or talking about mm -hmm. religious rights or whatever. It's how it affects the person themselves, mm -hmm. isn't it? You know, and if you if you don't see it as being mm -hmm. harmful, mm -hmm. you can go for it, can't you? That's true. And there were a lot of people, uh, I don't know, some kind of lobbyist that um, refused. We, we, what, at the end of the ad, we wanted to say, put a bit of manpower in your wash. But there are some women that uh, complained and said they found they found that a little bit offensive because it was so sexist towards men. But isn't that yeah. crazy? Well, yeah, I don't. But it's in the in the eye of the beholder because everyone else sees it as a great lot of fun and, yeah. and it's uh, it's a good um, cause. It's, it's a wonderful deal. Tell us about the movie that you've made with a collection of uh, of very interesting males. Very interesting males. Mm. I had a fantastic time on it. Signal One. We yes. went to the premiere last night. Successful. Open since it really good successful. Reaction. Yeah, great reaction. The great thing about this movie, it's a it's a thriller, and yeah. I think you were talking to Jacko this yes, week, weren't you, or last was. week? Yes, I certainly was. Yeah. He was wonderful to work with, very daunting. He's enormous, as you know, and quite terrifying to look at, but as sweet as a bunny. He's a really lovely guy. Uh, the wonderful thing about the movie, Thriller, is that it only cost a couple of million dollars to make, and it's up against all those other thrillers which right. cost, what, Fortune. 90 million? Yes, sure. And so this is a little piece from it. Oh, this is Ooh. the saucy bit. Right, let's see what he does. No, it's not what he does, it's what I do. Oh. <laughs> It's been quite an opening this morning, hasn't it? Whoops! Yes. <laughs> that's all we see. Of me? Yes. Now you see, you actually that's see what? a lot more of me. I don't oh. know whether I should say, unfortunately, or not. No. Um, what about what about the other male co-star? Do you have many scenes with uh, Christopher Atkins? With Christopher, um, yes, I do. Uh, it's a little bit difficult for me to talk about it because if I tell you all about my particular role, then I ruin the plot mm -hmm. um, somewhat. But. He has he got a head like a smashed taxi, hasn't he? The old, the <laughs> old Jacko. No, 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 Jacko. He's a good friend, I can say that. Yeah, I hope so. Yes, I He'll hope He'll be he in trouble too. otherwise. Yeah. No, he's a, he's a sweetie. So you don't actually have all that many scenes, but, well, for reasons no, of the story. Well, I do, but, but I don't. Yes. Do you see yourself now mainly as an actor? Do you, I mean, you still model, don't you? Oh, no, 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 never? no. I stopped modelling about ten years ago. I'd still like to, but I'm getting on now. Oh, come on. Well, in the modelling world, you really have to stop modelling at about 25, I guess, as soon as you start getting wrinkles. And I'm in my 40s now. But we did a story with you, actually, with uh, Michelle. We're seeing, seeing part of it You're now. You're going to see part of it mm, now. Mm, oh, there, yes, there's bits and pieces. Oh, God. About sorry. models of not necessarily yesteryear, but slightly... Uh... Well, yesteryear, we should really say that. Well, how long ago are we talking about? Um, I started modelling in 1971. And I finished in um, 82, I think, when I did Mad Max. Mm -hmm. And as soon, in those days, of course, uh, in 1982, you couldn't really model and act at the same time. It wasn't permitted. Whereas these days, it's, uh, it is permitted. But um, they're a fairly stuffy group. You know, uh, the acting prof in the acting profession yeah. years ago. And so you were seen to be selling yourself in a rather um, not a very tasteful way if you were modelling whilst you mm. were acting, so I had to stop modelling. What did you do with Timothy Dalton, if you'll pardon the question? <laughs> I could have done a lot more, no. Um, I did a movie called Living Daylights with him, a James Bond movie, and uh, the part that I had originally was quite large, uh, if you'll if you forgive, I just right. realised that. Said. But anyway, um, and uh, but it ended up most of it ended up on the cutting room floor. Unfortunately, I played a character called Rublevich, which probably means old dog or something. In, in what was Russia. he like? Was like? Oh, he's wonderful. Such a gentleman. Mm -hmm. And he's I thought so... he was a very good Bond. A lot yes. of people did, but I thought he was terrific. Yes, yeah, so did I. Mm -hmm. He's marvellous uh, because he has that lovely Welsh accent, the same as um, the first Sean one, Connery. Sean Connery. Yeah. Um, no, Sean Connery's actually Scottish, he is, isn't he? but I wasn't going to but he, <laughs> correct you. But he has that lovely lilt, anyway, to his mm. voice. The same that, uh, it's been lovely talking to you this morning. Nice to talk to you, too. Isn't you a lovely person? Just, just great to have you on the show. <laughs> Thanks, Virginia. Thanks so Good luck with art. Thank you. And all of that sort of stuff. And I hope you'll come back and see us again, will you? I'd love to. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Good morning, everybody.
Welcome to Good Morning Australia. Well, what do you think of our display? Beautiful flowers everywhere. Look at these, absolutely gorgeous. The reason they're here, well, I was just going through my garden this morning and I thought you might like to see the quality of stuff that I've got in for the season, though. No. <laughs> Actually, today begins the, the very first Melbourne International Flower and Garden Show. And uh, very, very kindly, uh, some uh, wonderful people associated with the, uh, with the flower show have organised these for us. They're absolutely beautiful. We'll give them to uh, selected guests throughout the morning. Actually, we have to give every guest something, I would imagine. We'll give the most beautiful posy to our first guest, Virginia Hay, who joins us in just a few moments' time. She's got a warning, too, for all actors and models. When you turn a certain age, things could be slightly... Bum -bum. <laughs> we'll find out very soon. Also, Gabby Hollows is here to talk about the Fred Hollows Foundation. Lovely lady and beautiful to see her again. Elise Platt has left neighbours but she's with us this morning. Tony Tottenham from Healthy, Wealthy and Wise is going to take us through craft as only she can. Beautiful voice of Miriam Gormley is here to entertain this morning. And Bruce Mansfield is going to take us down memory lane as only he can. Musically speaking, in charge, as always, Dr John Foreman. <laughs> Good morning to you, John. It's beautiful to see some flowers there on the piano. Oh, the only sad thing is, though, not one snapdragon in sight, which oh. is my very favourite flower. How are you, John? I'm very well, thanks this morning, Bert. Of course, the big AFL dinner has come and gone, the big social event here in Melbourne, with over 3,000 guests and a pretty wild night by, uh, by all reports. This is what the place looked like the day after. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know something? I think that may be pretty close to the truth because a couple of footy clubs aren't too happy about the fact that the MCG was used for the uh, occasion night before last. And a couple of games over the, the coming weekend have been uh, postponed, including the, the Footscray game. But still, I suppose a good night was had by all. 3,000 people there and $500 ahead. So it would need to be a good night, wouldn't it, eh? What would we get for $500, I wonder, Virginia? Please welcome Virginia Hay to Good Morning Australia. Hi. Lovely to see you. Lovely to see you too. Welcome back and all that sort of thing. Thank you very much. I'm the snapdragon. You said you don't have any snapdragons around. You're a snapdragon? <laughs> yes, sometimes. If I was playing snap Watch with out. you, the hand Watch would be out. there very quickly. <laughs> you know what the snapdragon looks like, don't you? It's I a, do. Yeah. It's a very ordinary sort of flower, but it brings back a lot of childhood memories to me. And so, yes, and how so? Well, because we had a lot at home, you Did know. You? And, yes. <laughs> Yeah, snap, oh, okay. snapdragons and what are the, the big hydrangeas? They're not as popular as, as they used to be, are they, the snapdragons? They are in certain parts of southern Mongolia, I believe, oh. but not <laughs> here in Australia, unfortunately. What are your favourite flowers? These are beautiful. Oh, gosh, I love all... I love lilies, gardenias, lilies and gardenias. And you can't go wrong with roses either, and can you? And you can't go wrong with roses. I love those peony roses. Have you seen those? Which Absolutely that? beautiful. They're, they're quite large. The, the bulb is, is very large and, and tight. It's like a, a, a little bit bigger than a golf ball, I'd say. Yeah. And you look at it and you think, oh, God, how disappointing it's, you know, and when you get it, because you, you buy them half sure. closed. But then after about three days, mm. voila, boom. They just explode into these beautiful, old-fashioned, huge, floppy petals. They're, what are they, they called? Penny. Peony. Peony roses, yeah. They must get some for Patty oh, and put them there as little tiny things and frighten them out of them and all of a sudden, bang, <laughs> yeah, suddenly, boom, they, they open. explode. Yeah, they're beautiful. Do you still get flowers, may I ask you, Virginia? Oh, that's a very personal question. Oh, I wish. I could lie, couldn't I? But no, I haven't had a bunch of flowers given to me for ever such a long time, We'll have to do something about that in Oh, my cat minutes. brings flowers and feathers and flowers and bits and pieces in and deposits them at my feet. So not quite the same. Not quite the same. Yeah. <laughs> Virginia, I made mention before about um, the people have got to uh, be a little careful when they hit a a certain age. Now, you've had so far a fantastic career in, in modelling and acting, mm. but don't tell me that here in Australia they are visiting the, the problem which happens in some parts of the rest of the world. You, certain, you turn a certain age, 40 is the master, <laughs> and all of a sudden things go boom boom. Well, actually at the moment Australia is, uh, I think anyway, the best place to be in the world, where, especially in our industry, we're very fortunate because we've got the pending Fox Studios coming, yep. we've got all the cable network networks plus the free-to-air networks, so there's lots of work, don't be mistaken, but there, there has been, it's changing slowly, but there has been a certain attitude towards the over 40, which is a little bit hysterical. If you notice ads on TV are aimed at, uh, that are aimed at 40s are usually uh, pep up vitamins, laxatives, weight loss program sorry <laughs> <laughs> and uh, incontinence protection that sort of thing yeah. <laughs> you've covered me so far yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and me too i'm sitting there thinking feeling quite tragic thinking isn't there anything wonder i feel wonderful over 40 you know yeah. and uh, a lot of my girlfriends do are all fabulous baby boomers i sort of like to think of myself as the evangelist for the fabulous new age woman but in the industry they do tend to 
And it's not really their fault. They're, they're trying to change now what with fabulous, glamorous older women in America, mm -hmm. which I guess we'll talk about in a tick. But uh, so far in Australia, um, over 40 has been de depicted as a little bit dowdy as far as characters are concerned. Mm -hmm. um, normally the over 40 year old is the stereotypical mother or yeah. she might be a grandmother or um, she can be an attractive real estate agent or something like sure. that. But normally not of sexual, glamorous, vibrant, um, yeah. creature unfortunately. I, I don't sound like a greaser, but I, I'm absolutely amazed that you, you, you've hit 40 anyway. I wouldn't have imagined <laughs> that, uh, that that was the case. Well, I'm way over 40 at the moment. Yeah. What do you mean? Well, at the moment, I'm 43 years and X days, no. <laughs> You're 43, eh? Right? Yeah, 44 in June. Good and clean feeling, life, that must be the answer, is it? Well, it is. I, I don't drink anymore. I used to have the odd tipple, mm. but it's torture on the face, of course. No booze, if you're over 40, just stop it. And no smoking? <laughs> no smoking. I used to smoke uh, 40 a day years ago, when mm. it was... Well, everyone did. It was we, in, yeah. Well, we used to watch the old fabulous 40s glamorous movies and see Lauren McCall with a fag hanging out of her mouth and Joan Crawford and all these wonderful women. And, of course, we did the same thing. We thought we looked wonderful with a fag. You know, not there, but sort of hanging out. Of Wandering around with a fag out of one's <laughs> mouth? The mind boggles. So no smoking, no drinking. No drinking, no partying. Oh, so good. It's a life of a nun. Three out of four is not Be bad. Celibate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I feel so sorry for you. I think I'm going to I'm going to break a rule. I think for the very first time since I've been doing the show, I want to take you to lunch. I want to take a guest out to Let's lunch. Let's go. Come on. Well, hello, hello, hello. I think my luck's changed. Sorry, Paddy. <laughs> Come on, have a fag hanging out of my mouth. Yeah, go on. In Pacific Drive, are the the character you play is is she sort of supposed to be in her forties? She well, yes. Uh, the the character breakdown was for an ex model, uh, someone in their late thirties or early forties, and I thought, oh, it's got to be me. I heard about it in the grapevine, and I yeah. chased it. I pursued this particular part and uh, no she so she's supposed to be very glamorous because she's an ex-model unless they presume that ex-models have fallen to pieces by the time they get to you know early 40s but hopefully most of us have got halfway decent uh, uh, facial structure you know so mm. we can I must say with Pacific Drive it surprises me uh, with the Nine Network for whom I've got uh, tremendous admiration but they didn't stay with that all long in in prime time did they and the one thing no. that in, you know invariably happens with them they they, they will give a, a certain chance but it was moved very quickly wasn't it well I think they that they just had it on prime time for one night just to uh, with the uh, time Yes, to whet the appetite to showcase it, and then yeah. they moved it. It was always meant to be a late night um, TV show. It was not well. We, it's not really supposed to replace chances, but there was a chances time slot available. Yeah. Um, well, I'm not a TV executive, obviously. I don't know if that's the actual, you know, the story behind it. But um, I do know that it was designed for late night TV, but it's shown all around the world. It's a great show. It's actually going to be shown during the day. I know mm -hmm. we're not supposed to plug Channel that's 9. A, that's Channel right. 10, but it's going, I think it's uh, uh, April the 29th or 27th. It's going to start at 3 o'clock every day, half an hour. At the moment, they're showing two episodes um, each of the two nights, Monday. And Wednesday. We'll knock the socks off you there because we've got a great program there, Monday to Friday with Bridget Duclay, you see. So oh, you do too. You'll be moved again. Oh, you'll be moved again. Oh, that's sad. The one thing I do ask is make sure they don't program it between 9 and 11 30 in the morning, will you? Yeah. I'll really get furious there. Well, that would be terrible, wouldn't it? You made mention before about uh, the, the people overseas. Yeah. Did that same sort of syndrome, does it occur in America? Same thing, no, a number of people who it doesn't. are successful. I think what's happened is uh, I think a lot of the baby boomers, are, of course, the, the women and the gentlemen that went through the 60s or yeah. that had their teenage years in the 60s are now all around about my age and, and older so everywhere else in the world um, the actresses that hit 40 50 are saying hey hang on a minute what about me I'm still vibrant and youthful and, and sexy and yeah. you know and, and attractive so they're making themselves they're forging a path for them path for themselves overseas like the fabulous Susan Sarandon yes. like the wonderful Goldie Horn look at Goldie Horn she's over 50 mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. and uh, of course Lauren Bacall she's still modeling she's just she just uh, got Jane a, Fonda, a, a Jane Fonda she's in the 60s isn't she? Yeah, and uh, Michelle Pfeiffer is same age as me. Yeah, and um, who else? Oh, there are all those wonderful, wonderful women who are still um, working, and in fact, working more so now than they ever did before. It will change in Australia, and it is changing now. Mm. To me, more would be giving forty a hell of a shot. Would she should be approaching Ooh, it? I don't know. No, Late I think 30s? she's. Mm, no? I think she's probably mid thirties. Mm. Doesn't she look great though? She looks but fantastic. But also, the wonderful thing about all of this is that we're we're not expected to look like sticks, women anymore. We're allowed to have curves. Do you remember that movie, um, Some Like It Hot? Yes, very much so. And uh, Jack Lemmon, I think it was, said that Marilyn Monroe's figure, her walk, so it reminded him of Jello on Springs. That's right. I remember do you remember that? That? Yes, I do. And it, women in those days, of course, were voluptuous, sexy. Sophia had those famous. Mm. They had hips and. Mm. 
I was going to say, tits. Yeah. But had the boobs. We, we know all about I'm those, sorry. yes. <laughs> it's reached Good Morning Australia now. <laughs> we do have an adult audience. It's, the kids have read about it anyway in, the, yeah. in all the, the magazines. But, um, no, but the good thing about it is that women are allowed to look like women these days, especially mm. older women. We're allowed to have bodies, which is just wonderful. That I'm film was so also famous for the, the last line of the movie. It's considered to be the, the greatest line in, uh, in Hollywood history. It's Tony Curtis in drag yeah. and racing off with Joey Brown, who played the millionaire, the multi-millionaire. And uh, Marilyn Monroe, and I beg your pardon, uh, Tony Curtis had to say in drag to Joey Brown, look, there's something I've, I've got to tell you, um, I'm a man. And Joey Brown's line was, nobody's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the end of the movie. Absolutely beautiful. So it left did, it up in the air. Yeah, yeah. didn't you? You did Prisoner, didn't you? I did. I did, years and years ago. Do you ever watch that late at night? Because it's being rerun I've been now. waiting for my... Because Prisoners, it's been rerun, but each of the... I don't know what to call it, but each of the sessions lasts yeah. for about 10 years, I think. So, you know, every... I think in, a, in the last 20 years now, many people... Did you work but, with uh, Nolene, the, the character Nolene? Ah, uh, yes. You know, she took like I this, did. <laughs> Because we were talking about her on Monday, yeah. we were saying we were really like... She says nice things about you I know, but she's my, I adore... <laughs> actually, this is, look, there she is there. Oh, my dream girl. Come to me, I have some beautiful flowers oh, for you, darling. it's me without makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Could be me without makeup. So, did you ever work with that particular character? No, I don't think so. She's... I you, adore you're her. Are my leg? Was she really on? Yes. Yeah? Yes. No, I didn't know. What do you mean? What, uh, well, I'm I don't remember seeing her at all. Oh, she used to, she, I was talking about Monday. She used to get around with her hand in her <laughs> pocket and talk like, I don't, and she's in the series at the moment, so you can see her. No, not tonight. Uh, you can see her next week. Well, I'm waiting for my character to come back on. Uh, I'm prisoner. I keep, you know, flipping the channels. Who did you play? Um, I played a, a Lee Templer, who is a, a model. It's a funny story, actually. This woman, the character, was incredibly plain and probably short and uh, ugly. All she ever wanted to do was to be a model. So she saved up enough money. It's hysterical, the back story. She saved up all of this money, had facelifts, I don't know, leg extensions and all the whole thing. <laughs> and ended, <laughs> ended up being... Wish in, I had that job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. <laughs> Newton here. <laughs> She ended up being incredibly attractive, became a famous model. On the way to becoming a famous model, she sold herself. She was a courtesan or prostitute, mm -hmm. whatever. And apparently uh, she had a pimp. Um, uh, and she did some porn movies. And once she became famous, the, the pimp came back into her life and, and threatened to, to expose her, uh, expose her yeah. yes, so to speak, yes. um, and show again. her <laughs> again yeah, um, if, he didn't, uh, if she didn't give him lots of money. So, of course, she killed him. Naturally, oh, right. as you would. No, as you wouldn't. But uh, so the character ended up in jail. And because I'd had several affairs with the commissioners of police and commissioner of jail and uh, so as, the jail and, as the character, yes. not me. Because <laughs> I had I affairs, I got. They're going to ask you to draw upon your experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wouldn't that be terrible? Yes. Sergeant Newton no. here. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my character was allowed to stay in prisoner in uh, her everyday clothes and, you know, covered in yeah. makeup and the whole thing. It was hysterical. You know, I had this sort of Farrah Force hairdo and the whole thing and got sabotaged daily by the other prisoners. That, that must be to come, because it hasn't happened so far. Uh, no, I don't think it's on uh, so far, but mm. it will be coming up. Because at the yeah. moment we've got the girly dogs like that, <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. I know. An amazing coincidence, you know, I didn't realise we were going to do a special feature on the, uh, the Melbourne uh, International Flower and, uh, and Garden Show. Uh, but I went out this morning and I bought some flowers for you, knowing that you were going to be on the show. Oh, you It just so softy. happens I have them here. So there you are, especially for you, Virginia. Thank you. Great to see you as always. Thank you very and much. And good luck. And eventually when you turn 40, I realise you could be 43 years old, you're, you're lying. It's my hip measurement. It's your... That's right. I, I remember. Yeah, I'm the man with the tape measure. Please thank Virginia Hay. Lovely seeing you, Virginia. Thank you. You think she believed I actually went out and bought those flowers? Next, a special quest for the International Flower and Garden Show as we speak to Terry Major Bell about its hopes and its dreams and its future.